NFED half wave antenna or any long wire antenna that's fed at the end just got a simple piece of wire here it's about 22 feet long something like that it's on a fiberglass mast I've got it away from everything and uh, I wanted to show you what we've got on here a 49 to 1 Ullen just this is the typical configuration the two primaries um, just got it on the on, not in a box so you can actually see it has a high power cap now they have the high power cap they say to help the higher frequencies on the SWR because they really struggle even Ullens really aren't that efficient you know they're around about 65% maybe 70 something like that they're not that efficient so problem is they start to warm the core up but as they get higher in, in the frequency range up in 28 megs they become well, pretty rubbish really now let's have a look at the SWR this particular one right I've got here between 29 3 to 1 dropping down to minimum 2 to 1 26 megs 24 2 to 2 3 so yeah it's not brilliant now my guess is it's going to be the coaxial cable is becoming part of the antenna common mode now some antennas actually um, make use of the, the antenna radiator the actual antenna wire radiating the ones that come to mind is if you uh, Carolina Wyndham they have the line isolator a quarter of the wavelength or something like that down there and actually using the coax to radiate but they have an, a line isolator that after that point to stop anymore and uh, again the flower pot antenna is using the same principle it uses part of the coax to actually radiate then they put an iron a line isolator to cut it off from that point so what we're going to do is we're going to swap out that connector now and put a line isolator in and see if there's any difference just bear me one second while we connect one up right We've now connected our line isolator. We fitted here a Super Yagi one to one ballon. Very good, uh, the Super Yagi ones. You can tell they're good because they have the SO239 connector is connected inside and not outside. The reason you want them on the inside and not the outside is because if you had it outside, you then putting all your RF through the stainless steel bolts to the connector through the plastic into the back of the transformer now when you get up to 400 500 watts or more that is an issue the stainless steel bolt will then start to warm up uh, become looser because it starts to melt the plastic and, and obviously a loose connection is, is not not a desirable thing at all and it will probably fail now on the Super Yagi one, the um, transformer wires will connect directly to the back of the SO239 socket. So that's why if you're looking out for one, make sure all balance you buy are the SO239 on the inside. If they're outside, they've, they've missed the, the point of it completely and, and that will be an issue. That's a poor design. Now, so we've got our SO239, let's go to the SWR meter analyzer and see what there is. Look at that straight away, you can see there's a difference. We're looking now at 27 megs, 29, 1.2, 28, 1 to 1, 26, 1 to 1, 25, 24, 1 to 1 1.4. So that is a well, it's nearly five megahertz bandwidth. A really good SWR that has made a huge difference. 
because that has removed the coax out of the equation and um, that should make a quieter receive as well so it's not actually picking up any noise any common mode noise on the outside of the coax anymore it's, you do the squeeze test here we go there's no fluctuation so it's completely isolated putting turns on your coax is not going to help really you can't possibly get enough turns on it you'll be looking at 20 turns uh, unsightly I mean for the sake of what 30 pounds or build one yourself if you're going to build one yourself go and see Peter's at TRX Bench he does some excellent excellent uh, videos there on balance so let's go and have a look at the receiver see what the uh, improvement is oh first off we need to swap it over I'm going to take the common mode off so you can actually see the receiver as it was uh, without that on and then we'll we'll come back we'll put the uh, the chalk back on and then we'll have a look at the receiver again here we are the receiver as you can see it's almost an S7 a noise let me turn the background you can actually hear me so it, it's high the reason I shot the video down at the workshop is to uh, is to show the difference I got a pretty noisy environment a lot of people probably got the same situation it's uh, it's pretty unusable actually is uh, is this to receive uh, I'm concentrating on 27 megahertz for there's a lot of guys out there running CB uh, and uh, you know it's going to help a lot of people so right let's uh, let's pause it let's go back outside and reintroduce the the common mode short and then we can have a look if there's any difference if any on the noise right we're back at the receiver you can see there's a big difference it's gone from an s7 to zero yeah we still got the antenna still plugged in as we can flick through So you can see I can actually receive signals now if there's anything on the band. There's a beacon on this frequency so I'll remember to, uh, to hear this coming through. add in a common mode choke to a 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 or any sort of infed antenna that's going to be open to common mode can make such a big difference for the sake of 30 pounds or if you're making yourself for less than half that price I would guess you can make such a big difference to your radio Hobby. Okay, well, there's nothing more to be said to that. I say thank you very much for listening, and I hope it helps somebody else out. All the best for now. All comments are welcome.